Good morning. How are you doing this fine day? Me? Still regretting my decision to forego the elocution lessons when I was younger, but thanks for asking. Um, we've got a, an absolutely jam-packed show for you today, uh, including a guest, Neil Edwards, of the Builders Conference to talk about uh, construction contract awards for the past month. So let's roll that intro and get the show on the road. <laughs> Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Friday, the 30th of July, and as that guy who never seems to change his shirt just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, the Environment Agency has issued a stark warning over plastic demolition and construction waste. Three case dealers have widened their horizons. Chinese-built XCMG um, trucks are on parade, and as I mentioned earlier, our very special guest, Builders Conference CEO Neil Edwards, will be joining us shortly to look back over yet another positive month for construction contract awards. If you've got any comments or questions for either myself or perhaps more importantly for Neil, please leave them in the chat and we'll get to them just as soon as we possibly can. Uh, But first, let's check out which celebrities will be summoning up the puff to blow out their birthday candles today. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to author Emily Bronte. Uh, I've never actually read Wuthering Heights, uh, but if it's good enough for Kate Bush, then it's Certainly good enough for me. Uh, Happy birthday also to car-making pioneer Henry Ford. Ford reportedly once said you could have one of his cars in any colour you like, so long as it was black. That mantra seems to have been adopted by construction equipment uh, makers the world over, only apparently they prefer yellow. Uh, Happy birthday also to the governator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. To Morpheus himself, Lawrence Fishburne. To actress Lisa Kudrow, better known by her friends as Phoebe Buffay. Uh, And to Inception director Christopher Nolan, happy birthday to each and every one of them. But far more importantly, it is happy actual birthday to my pink and shiny new grandson Bobby, born yesterday just before lunchtime and weighing in at an eye-watering nine pounds and six ounces. Welcome to the world, little man. And even though I know you're not, I, uh, actually named after Bobby Moore. That's what I intend to tell people. Uh, I think it will make your life a little bit easier when you go for your West Ham trial in roughly 15 or so years, I would imagine. Businesses in the construction and demolition industries must ensure they deal with waste plastic properly to stop illegal exports. That stark warning comes from the Environment Agency, which is aware of increasing levels of plastic film and wrap from the construction and demolition sector being illegally exported. During the last year, the Environment Agency has intercepted shipments to prevent the illegal export of this material on numerous occasions. The agency inspected 1,889 containers at English ports and stopped 463 being illegally exported. This, combined with intervention upstream at sites, prevented the illegal export of nearly 23,000 tonnes of waste. Those convicted of illegally exporting waste face an unlimited fine and a two-year jail sentence. But construction firms could also face enforcement action if contaminated construction and demolition waste plastic is illegally exported. Uh, Malcolm Lithgow, head of waste regulation at the Environment Environment Agency, said, we are seeing a marked increase in the number of highly contaminated plastic film and wrap shipments from the construction and demolition industry being stopped by our officers. I would strongly urge businesses to observe their legal responsibility to ensure waste is processed appropriately so we can protect uh, human health and the environment now and for future generations. Uh, It's not enough, apparently, just to give your waste to someone else, even a registered carrier. You need to know where your waste will ultimately end up to know it's been handled properly. Um, The Environment Agency also said, we want to work constructively with those in the construction, demolition and waste sectors so they can operate compliantly. But we will not hesitate to clamp down on those who show disregard for the environment 
and the law. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Our friends over at Case Construction Equipment have announced some significant territory expansions for three of their UK dealers, M&M Plant, River Lee Limited and Warwick Ward. Uh, River Lee's territory uh, expands to include all of South Wales, Herefordshire, Gloucestershire and North Wiltshire. M&M Plant extends, to coverage, uh, it extends its coverage rather to Dorset, Avon and South West Hampshire. Excuse me. <clears throat> and finally, Warwick Ward expands into Northumberland, Tyne and Weir, County Durham, uh, North Yorkshire in the east, East Riding of Yorkshire, uh, Oxfordshire, Berkshire, Hampshire, North East, and Wiltshire East. Our dealers are long standing case partners, and their territory expansions represent our commitment to providing customers with the best possible. Uh, support for all case solutions, says Case Constructions' Joseph O'Grady. In addition to the customer benefits, those territory expansions will generate employment opportunities across our dealer network as they seek to expand sales, service and parts teams to grow their offerings in line with those expansions. So good news all round and congratulations to those three case dealers. Now, I can see this morning's guest, Neil Edwards, waiting in the wings, but I have just one more thing to share with you before we look at the construction sector's accomplishments over the past month. Now, I know that video said uh, who's buying, and what I'm about to show you is not actually about who's buying, but about who's exporting, but we don't actually have a video for that. Uh, besides, the video I'm about to show you pretty much speaks for itself, as it underscores the sheer scale of Chinese equipment manufacturers in general, and our friends over at XCMG in particular. Take a look at this. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. Uh, good, Thank good of you to join us. And congratulations um, on being a uh, grandfather. Grandfather for the third time. Yeah, that's the the the, the beard was a, a fashion <laughs> accessory. Now it's just required. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot of duties around the Christmas time then, have you? <laughs> yeah, and do you know the other thing as well? It's my wife's birthday on the July the seventeenth. It's my daughter who's just had the baby on the eighteenth, and lo and behold, I've got another one in July as well. So July in future is going to be f phenomenally expensive. Um, but yeah, there you are. Um, I've already given you a bit of a a, a bit of an intro. Um, and I always start with the same thing. Are we looking at a positive month? What are the scores on the doors? Neil, yeah. take it away. Well, we are looking at another great month. Uh, uh, currently, obviously, we've got still today to go, but um, we're over five and three quarter billion pounds worth of work uh, that we've researched here at the Builders Conference uh, of Contract Awards. So, uh, uh, as we say, it used to be, <clears throat> I think we're going to have to revise it. It used to be a four billion pound average, but now I think we're going to have to revise that and uh, put that average up to five billion because uh, we're hitting those marks on most months now. Yeah, do, do you know, I, I've been talking about this recently, and, and every time I do mention that that four 
a billion pound monthly benchmark. It seems that it, well, it does. It gets further and further ago. I, I, it must be what two two and a half years ago that we last were were bumping along at four billion. So yeah, I think, I think, we, yeah, I think we need so. to revise our predictions now. Absolutely, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, and also we're now sort of like well above eighty five billion as a rolling year. So uh, we used to say about between. 70 and 80 uh, billion. So, yeah, we might have to revise our figures over the next few years. Unbelievable. So, obviously, the second question is, who were the big winners? Who who tops the table this month? Um, it's, it's, it's a new type of uh, company this month. Um, it's a company called TSL Projects, who are actually owned uh, uh, by, I hope I say this, it's the Tonro Group. And we've been discussing this uh, over the last year or so, but the, the rise and rise of distribution centres, hubs, warehouses, because of obviously the way we now uh, buy online. Um, and this is their largest project that they've actually secured, or the largest project we've got here, is for a £350 million uh, distribution uh, centre, food manufacturing and technology, uh, and that's in Derby, um, and it's the former, uh, it, I think it's pronounced Selenese site, um, so it's a production facility up there in 315, and they've won a couple of projects, obviously the other project was about 50 odd million pounds uh, worth of work. Um, second on the list is Lango Rourke, uh, a very familiar name to the, the world, uh, and the largest one of their projects that they picked up is in London, it's Timber Square, uh, Lavington Street, and it's 195 million pounds worth of work. And that's for, I've got down here, 370,000 uh, square feet of mixed use space, uh, including 350,000 square foot of grade A offices and affordable workspace. And the client there is for Landsec, so a pretty significant um, uh, client as well. Uh, third on the list, um, is Multiplex, and they've picked up a, a, another large project, a £300 million pound project uh, for some offices in Leadenhall Street. It includes retail units at ground floor, uh, and the client for that is Brookfield Properties. So the top three there, um, well over £300 million pounds for the work each of them. That's fantastic. It's interesting to see Multiplex and Lango Rock back up up the top. I mean, obviously they're they're an ever present force, both of them, but they haven't been at the top of the table for for quite some time. So that's uh, that's quite interesting to see. Yeah, you're dead right. They've uh, they they picked up some work through the through the UK, but they haven't been up at the top um, top echelons of the BC Live table. I think the other one that I find interesting is the fact that we're talking about mixed use developments. Obviously, the Builders Conference very kindly supply us with our uh, project leads uh, information that we we uh, run every or pretty much every day on the Breakfast Show. Um, and just recently, mixed use developments do seem to be very much the flavour of the month. Um, you know, the, the the mix of retail and accommodation and, and hotels and restaurants and accommodation. You know, all of that I guess is part of solving the uh, the housing shortage. Yes, yeah, we're we're still nowhere near our target of something like two hundred and fifty units per year, uh, two hundred fifty thousand units, sorry, per year, to uh, uh, to actually meet the demands of uh, the UK population. So yeah, mixed use developments will be slowly, or not slowly, but quickly coming to the fore, and um, yeah, hopefully solving that issue. Yeah, absolutely. Have you got any more notable um, projects that you'd like to shout about? Yeah, um, fourth on the list um, is, uh, and this month, is for a new uh, EFW incinerator. Uh, and this project is, uh, where is this? This project is in Leeds, and it's being project managed and run by Hitachi. So it's obviously their equipment that's going in there, um, and it's at the uh, Skelton Grange Power Station site, uh, just off the uh, junction 45 of the M1. And that's a £250 million pound project. And one, one, one other one to talk about uh, on, on the large scale of site things is there is going to be uh, the redevelopment of the site to provide a new Chinese embassy. Uh, and that's at Royal Mint Court, Mint Street in London. And surprisingly enough, <laughs> the company that's going to be building that is the Beijing Construction Engineering Group. Uh, <laughs> 
So there was no, <laughs> no guessing who really was going to be doing that project. Um, but that's a 200 million pound project there. And that's uh, part restoration of the grade two listed building um, and obviously uh, providing a new embassy behind the scenes. And we normally talk about uh, the number of projects and this month uh, the most number of projects picked up is by Kia. Uh, normally we see them as something like one a day but this month is a little bit less. At the present moment in time as we sit here today it's uh, 10 uh, and they are, uh, that's a combined total of 187 million pounds, largest of which is uh, for some preparatory works and some um, enabling works for HS2. It's highways and utilities are enabling works. We always think that maybe just uh, HS2 is just a straightforward line, but obviously you've got a lot of diversions and uh, of existing roads, uh, existing utilities, etc. So yeah, they've um, picked up that project and that's around, uh, where is it? It's the phase 2A of the project from Birmingham to Crewe. So it's enabling works for that. It's in early environmental works. Um, so we can see there that already we spoke about HS2 and HS2A, which is the, the link off. We're already preparing some of the work from some of the areas for that to actually happen. So um, it's all good news for construction, really. Absolutely. So I mean, another key metric that we always look at is the number of co uh, companies that have picked up more than £100 million pounds worth of work. How are we looking on that this month? Yeah, I looked to the side because I've obviously got the screen open here. Exactly. <laughs> um, as we speak live, it is 14. Uh, and it go, it, you know, at over the 100 million and Gallifer Trier in 14th place at the present moment with 104 million pounds worth of work this month. No, I, I mean, I think one of the things that we need to bear in mind, I, I know we've got out the habit of um, talking about summer and holidays and stuff, but we are in July. I mean, July yeah. and August are traditionally the slower months. Um, yeah. So, you know, the fact that we're at 5.7, you know, knocking on the door of 6 billion in a month where, you know, some people will have managed to get away on, on their holidays, even if it's only, you know, 20 miles up the road, you know, that's mm. still a, a phenomenal figure, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And we are finding that, actually. We are finding more and more people at this present moment in time are away. Uh, they've taken leave. Um, as we know, we don't know whether it's going to be, well, because it's their own, <laughs> but whether it's in the UK or not. And that actually um, uh, means that I think the UK entertainment and hospitality sectors in the next uh, 18 months will probably have a, a little bit of a boost in the way of construction. And I know uh, not far from me here in, uh, I'm in East Sussex, but in West Sussex, uh, centre parks are looking um, at doing a new village, um, which is about £400 million worth of work. Uh, just off of the M23 uh, uh, along the Balkan Road. So if they're going to put a £400 million investment there as well. So everything is looking pretty good. But yeah, we are seeing, going back to the holiday period, we are seeing that there are a number of people that we speak to on a regular basis that are, are, are unavailable because they're away on leave. And, and, and if we look at um, the number of uh, projects that we've uh, researched and contract awarded this month here at Builders Conferences, something like 517, whereas in June it was 516, and last July it was 430. So, yeah, it's it's still pretty busy out there, and uh, we've got 341 companies that we've so far recognised as winning new work, whereas in June last last month it was only 325, even though the, the amount was bigger. Um, I know these are a lot of numbers being fired at you. So what we can say is that... Uh, the, the construction industry is definitely in rude health at the moment. No, it it feels like that all around. It really does. You know, I, I mean, we're in a position now where we're actually getting people phoning us to ask if if they can advertise with us, for example. You know, oh, in the past, <laughs> in the past, you have to go and chase it. We've we've got people actually chasing us now. So, you know, I think they're they're keen to get their their part of the work um, regionally. Let, let me guess, London's <laughs> probably fairly close to the top, uh, right? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that if we had a pound every time we said that, Mark, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we wouldn't be doing this show together. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yes, it's regionally, London is the uh, uh, the leader this month, uh, 1.6 billion pounds worth of work. Um, combined together, the Midlands is not far behind, but it's about, it's about 992 million pounds. 
um, Yorkshire 481 and actually North West uh, 497. So it is those sort of areas, but some of the other areas are a little bit lean this month, um, comparatively. Um, and Scotland is uh, only just over 250 million pounds worth of work. So yeah, but London, once again, but that doesn't include, uh, you have got the uh, home counties on top of that, but this month the home counties uh, don't seem to be as, uh, uh, have more, as much work as contract awarded as we normally see, actually. It's just that a lot of them are below a hundred million pounds. What about the sector split? <laughs> Again, let me consult my crystal ball and take a wild guess that house building is, again, fairly close to the top. Yeah, there's your pound again. <laughs> <laughs> this is too easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's £1.5 billion pounds worth of work is housing. Um, but second this month, uh, well, um, sorry, second this month is offices because of, I spoke to you about the obviously uh, project in Leadenhall Street, um, which uh, multiplex has secured. But third is all, is now this month um, warehouses, distribution centre, and factories. So um, yeah, I do see that as a a good sector to be in at the moment at this present moment in time. And uh, fourth is education. So we're putting some money back into the education sector as well. Um, our chat is is pretty busy, um, but I know as you as you've got the figures there close at hand, um, we've just had a question: How did Wales fare this past month? How did Wales fare? If we look at Wales. Uh, Oh dear, um, just about 60 million, which is pretty poor um, this month. So we uh, obviously, there was a moratorium not so long ago, wasn't there? Uh, we were talking about, they were looking at all their roads and I hope that hasn't, because um, that will be the infrastructure for getting to new distribution centres, etc. So if you haven't got the roads, why would you put a distribution centre in the middle of Wales? So I hope that's not going to affect the outcome of their uh, construction uh, the, uh, yeah, absolutely right uh, looks like you're going to be working for a little bit longer ken i'm, I'm sorry to say um, yeah, no I'm retirement sorry. imminent for you now while all of that's been going on neil the construction sector has been making the headlines for a, a whole variety of reasons um Let's see if I can press it. Right, okay, so that we've we've had the rise and rise of brick layer wages. We've had materials availability still declining, and we've got plant sales up by 70% year on year, uh, which it's hard to say that any of that is bad news. It's the implications thereof, I, I guess, that, that is potentially bad news. So taking those one, and, one at a time... Um, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember the uh, the loads of money character from the, uh, the 1980s, um, and, and uh, obviously that was a plasterer. But you get the very distinct impression that that's the situation we've got with uh, with bricklayers now, uh, and, and possibly even HGV drivers as well. Oh, definitely on those two, uh, and I don't think uh, loads of money is going to be far behind that either, because obviously once you start the process of trying to find bricklayers, it's not far after them that you're going to be requiring the, the plasterers and the second fixers. So. Yeah, um, and this is this is a worrying kind of uh, episode, really, because uh, we haven't um, highlighted how good the construction industry is for employment, um, and we've relied heavily upon uh, uh, personnel from not just this UK, but obviously around the world, and especially Europe, uh, over the last four, five, six, seven years, or whatever. Um, and probably we've taken the eye off the ball in our schools and colleges and not promoted uh, how uh, learning a trade um, and getting into the construction industry can be because it's a great industry. I keep that saying to everybody, it's a great industry. It's tough no matter what, you know, it is tough and you have to work hard. Um, and it isn't always plain sailing. There's, there's rainy days out there, there's cold days out there and everything else, but it is a fantastic industry. And what will happen is, is uh, the knock on effect of this will be if prices begin to rise, um, obviously many bids are uh, initially uh, provided on a fixed price basis. Um, the contractor will have to somehow, the main contractor will somehow have to find that money. Um, and we are seeing some companies not achieving that and going in, in, into administration. And I hope um, this isn't uh, a worrying trend because it may not be today, but it could be September, October, November time that these the effects of these rises will take effect with the 
contractors. Um, but but we really do need to start to push. And I, I know the horse is gone, uh, he's well and truly bolted, but we really do need to have to push um, <clears throat> how getting a trade, uh, an apprenticeship, uh, and or, you know, working in the construction industry is a great place to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess my other concern with that is you often see wage rises, particularly sharp wage rises, as a precursor to uh, inflation. Um, that that's that, that it's kind of the spectre that lurks in the background and, and can bite you on the back end when you're not not paying attention, isn't it? It is, and once you start to see inflation, then you see interest rates go up, and then uh, uh, the whole economy of things is quite difficult. But the other one on there is, uh, you know, you, we were talking about um, is the HGV drivers. If there is a huge hole in the number of people that can actually uh, drive those uh, HGV. And that's once again was never uh, highlighted as, a, as an industry to go in. It was kind of, um, uh, I don't know, it was people used to fall into it. But now I think we've got to push that because if we're going to be put, putting three things through on the roads, then we've got to have HGV drivers. And I know the knock on effect is no deliveries to site. And, um, and, and, and one of the things that isn't even up there is obviously I put it uh, out yesterday on social media is it, it, the pandemic. Um, you know, those bricklayers, um, HTV drivers are being pinged and we are now losing those for 10 days uh, because they're isolating. So it, it's a worrying time. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult balancing act. We're growing as an industry and the number of projects, we're growing as a, uh, you know, the value of it all. But at the same time, we need the, we need the supply and the supply is, uh, yeah, on a knife edge. You, you mentioned supply. The other one there, the, the one in the green there, uh, materials availability, that that doesn't seem to be catching up anytime soon, does it? No, uh, it hasn't. Um, and it's because some of those materials are coming from abroad, um, so you need a HGV driver to do that. There's another issue. Um, we're not uh, opening or we haven't increased productivity throughout the UK. So we're not meeting the demand. So yeah, I, I, it, it goes down to many different places. I know that, that still cement is still very, very difficult to um, obtain. Uh, and there are sometimes limitations on the number of, uh, or the amount that you're actually allowed to purchase. And what you'll get there then is maybe uh, inflation because people will say, well, I'll pay you 10p more. and because we've had such a tough time over the last 18 months, businesses will look at that and say, okay, if I can make a little bit more, I'll take that price. So, um, yeah, it becomes uh, an inflationary issue. Yeah, I mean, the, the other one there, which I, I know you and I don't not often talk about plant, but plant sales up by 70%, and the, and the bit of the plant um, industry that is um, bounced back the strongest is uh, telescopic handlers, which are obviously widely used on house building, which I, I guess... That echoes everything that you've been um, saying over the past few months, well, past few years, actually, about the, uh, the the rise and rise of house building. But we've now got a situation where, and I'm actually seeing this in press releases now, the pe that people are buying equipment based at least partly on lead times. You know, there are some manufacturers that can come up with the goods now or next week, whereas others are sold out until 2022. Yeah, it, it's great for those people that are sold out until 2022, but it, it's not great for the person that actually needs it tomorrow. So um, a, a lot of it obviously goes through um, uh, higher companies. Uh, and, and if they're, but it, 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 it's great news, it, you know, if we, because that's another part to uh, the construction industry is actually the engineering side of it, the manufacturing side of it. We don't, you know, the likes of JCB and people like that, they're, they're, they're great uh, employers of people. Uh, and we, uh, But I, I really want to know uh, how well we are promoting this through our, uh, our schools and colleges and universities, that that's a, that's a way to go. Um, I, I, I have got no evidence at the present moment in time uh, to find out how, they, how we're doing it. Are we just still doing uh, to tick the... Ofsted reports to tick the um, the lead tables for themselves, so people go. So we're not actually providing the education for what we actually want in the future. 
Um, that's something that needs to be looked at. I think the other thing, and, and, and Ken, our, our regular uh, poster there, Ken Hatter, has pointed out, uh, we lose red diesel um, April next year, um, and that's going to have an, a knock-on effect as well, um, obviously with the, with the plant industry as well. It's so big, you know, big, it, big. A, a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money, that is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a strange old month this month. Obviously, you know, knocking on the door of six billion, another very very positive month. But you just get the impression that there are spectres lurking outside the door that could knock at any moment. Don't you, you know? Yeah, I think you you were speaking yesterday. I was listening to your show yesterday. You were saying uh, we should fix the roof while the sun is shining, um, and we should. And as part of that fixing of that roof is um, producing uh, more people. Uh, to come through the ranks and to promote uh, the construction industry. It's not just the case of getting our own house in order regards uh, warehouse, you know, what we look like, etc. It's actually the chain of people coming through and uh, we need to start to get out there. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Well, we've had loads of comments, but none specifically for you, Neil. So um, okay. I'll let you get back to the day job because um, I know you've got some um, some important business to take care of, um, I, mm. which I won't dwell on, but I know you have. <laughs> um, so I'm going to let, let you go get get on with the day job while I deal with all this chat. Um, and I shall, well, I shall speak to you uh, this time next month, I would imagine. I look forward to it. And fingers crossed for some more positive news. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Right, let's get into that chat and see what everyone's been saying. Good morning, Nick Drew. Good to see you here, Nick. Um, all the way from Idaho. Wow. Um, I don't know quite what you're getting from this, Kendall, but I really appreciate you being here. Um, I really appreciate that uh, enormously. Um, good morning, Ken. And I think Ken's already left us, unfortunately. Uh, his break was over and done with, and we ran on a little bit longer than we normally do. Um, David Kitchenham. Now... <clears throat> I'm going to take a wild stab here. I don't. I, I can't. I don't know if I've, my path has ever crossed with with um, with David. We were talking about the fact that uh, all Fords were offered in black and that all plant is available in yellow. He has suggested teal blue. I'm going to take a wild stab and guess that he is somehow linked to those fine folks over at Cabelco. It's just a stab in the dark, but you never know. Uh, many thanks indeed um, for that, Nick. Uh, yeah, good to good to see the little fellas uh, finally arrived. Um, yeah. Well, I had nothing to do with the with the choice of name, but as I as I said earlier, I will be telling everybody that he is he is named after Bobby Moore. Um, that's good of you to say, uh, Ken. I, I like Neil too. Um, I mean, he's he's a friend anyway. But I mean, the very fact that he's got his finger on the pulse, absolutely uh, vital at, at this time. Um, let's gonna see. Ken that's <laughs> a good, very good point yeah we should get kenny's own intro music actually and, and probably you as well nick i mean you're you're here almost as often as he is um good morning mr fitzmorris uh, good to see you here um uh, i spoke to mother just this morning uh, she's doing well baby is doing well so uh all things being equal um obviously we, we have no visiting times at the moment but uh, all things being equal i will be meeting the new fella uh on Saturday, tomorrow. Uh, so fingers crossed on that. Uh, what have we got? Uh, look out, here comes China. Yeah, it never fails to amaze me. You know, when you see, uh, we, we did some work, uh, blimey, must be 18 months ago, we did some work with Sani uh, as part of the Construction Collective um, and obviously keep a, a close watch on, on what they do and on what XCMG do. And it's, it's just a staggering how big the operations are because they are so remote and because they've tended to concentrate on their domestic markets, you, you kind of overlook the fact that they are, you know, they are pretty much caterpillar scale. That's how big they are. Um, all the way from uh, New Zealand. Uh, you'll have to teach me how to pronounce that. Uh, I'm going to go with family, but congratulations on the new arrival for your family. Uh, many thanks indeed for that, Helena. I do appreciate that enormously. Uh, Wales, we've already covered. Ken, um, and yes, your, your response... <laughs> I think that, that pretty much sums up the situation down in Wales at the moment. Um, interesting point. I mean, you're not wrong, Ken, um, but, you know, we've, we've also got endless amounts of school leavers and college leavers and university leavers that aren't actually, for one reason or another, aren't making their way into the construction industry. And it will, it will it's already biting us on the rear end, but um, it's going to bite us more as in the future. Uh, sorry you missed the end of the show there ken but you do have much more important things to do than listen to me waffle on and um 
William Crooks, the incumbent president of the National Federation of Demolition Contractors. Uh, if contractors use bona fide waste disposal companies um, such as Walls Recycling and many others, uh, illegal exports of waste would not happen. It's a fair point, William, uh, and I totally agree with you. Um, but then we also live in a country where, you know, we do have, uh, you know, we have waste collections, we have um, landfill sites and everything else. And yet fly tipping is a problem that never goes away. Uh, there are always people that are ready, willing and able to take to take a shortcut, um, particularly when it comes to waste. Um, and the, the concern, I guess, now is the fact that, you know, if the Environment Agency are watching it, it's only a matter of time before somebody gets slapped with an unlimited fine. I mean, that's that's enough to make everybody sit up and take notice as well. Obviously, I'm sure that the the, the more reputable demolition companies in the UK are not um, stashing away um, illegal waste and, and sending it abroad. I, I don't believe that for one moment. Um, but not not every demolition contractor is a reputable demolition contractor. We've also got that the, the continuing issue of how do, how do I describe them? Interlopers landscaping contractors, groundworks contractors, and all those sort of people who occasionally dabble in demolition. Um, how do you how do you account for those? So yeah, I think you're absolutely right, William, as you almost almost always are, uh, but it's not as clear cut as just use um, the reputable recycling companies because we know full well that there's always somebody that will do it cheaper. You know, we've, we've had instances over the past few years of farmers being prosecuted for using part of their their own land um as a waste tip um so you know it's not it's not that straightforward um but the environment agency is watching um so that's that's certainly one to be aware of um i think that pretty much uh, wraps up the show for today um i will roll the outro in just a second um obviously i won't be here tomorrow uh partly because it's satty and partly because I, i'm all things being equal, I'm off to meet Bobby. Um, but tomorrow um, we will be dropping our weekend wrap, our weekly roundup show, uh, the weekend wrap, uh, which should drop some ungodly hour tomorrow, tomorrow morning to ease you all into what I hope will be a great weekend. So for now, uh, have a great day. Stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Neil Edwards for being part of the show. Um, and I will see you all again live and in person same time, same place on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone.